It's August 25th, 2021 here in Northern Alberta, Canada. And we wanted to give you a tour of our garden. Here is some of our tomato patch. We had some pretty severe weather, mid-June frost, and then we had that extreme heat wave through the end of June, where it reached 42 degrees. Yep, for about a week. There was a lot of stress on our plants, and also it was in about the middle of July. We had a bad hailstorm, pretty good uh, quarter size, quarter size or so. Yep. I heard that close by some people were having golf ball size yep. hail, vehicle damage. But anyways, our tomatoes have recovered fairly well mm -hmm. and are producing lots. So we're starting Bye. to get some some ripe tomatoes that we can enjoy, and we've been flagging some of them to save for seed. These particular tomatoes are indeterminate varieties, so we've been busy trying to trim them up. But I think because of all the stress that we have had, it is a little bit later in the fruiting season. So we're just starting to get some ripe tomatoes, whereas usually we'd be getting them early August, even the end of July. You guys have all probably been enjoying your tomatoes already. <laughs> so we grow both indeterminate and determinate tomatoes, meaning you have bush, which is determinate, their height is determined, predetermined, and then you also have indeterminate, which their height is indetermined, and they keep going until you chop off the top. So mom does most of the tomato pruning, so what do you do for indeterminates, mom? We like to try to make one main trunk, trunk and otherwise we just, <laughs> just pinch these guys off so that it puts its energy towards the top of the plant and whatever other fruit Rather is growing. Than a bunch of side shoots. So this year we've been in a bit of a drought and w throughout the whole spring and summer, all we got was two inches of rain through the, all those summer months. And then we hit the 42 degrees for mm -hmm. over a week. Then after that, we had more heat. Then we had a whole bunch of wind, a whole bunch of wind. And then finally, this last week, which, uh, what did it start on? Probably like uh, August 20th, Sunday. the rain started. So grateful to get an inch and three quarters, 40 millimeters of rain. And so what happened is that specifically our determinate varieties, because usually they kind of fruit all at once. So these fruit, because they've been storing up all this solar energy all summer, all of a sudden with this rain decided to <laughs> poof. And we found all kinds of tomato plants laying on, like they, our, our cages couldn't hold them anymore. So oh, wow. that's a good problem to have, but we ha did have to go and secure and bailey wine <laughs> yeah. a farmer's friend <laughs> got a little overweight <laughs> yeah they got overweight you can see the difference here with all the stress that happened on these plants with all their curl on the bottom but then now these are the more recent ones and they're much happier these particular ones are amish paste they're doing beautifully from seed that we saved last year. Specifically when you're wanting to save your seeds, you want to take ones that are tucked underneath a lot of the leaves so that there's less chance of them having cross-pollinated with other tomato varieties. So this is a bit more of an experimental bed where we companion planted scarlet runner beans along with golden bantam corn. And we made it too full. <laughs> so it looks like a jungle, but it's really pretty. And we've actually had some hummingbirds show up because of the scarlet runner flowers, which is really nice. So in this tunnel we have some 
Indeterminate Tomatoes. We got Yellow Perfection, One Flame, and then we also have Kentucky Blue Pole Beans, which we are really liking. They have a wonderful flavor. Sweet and crisp, lovely, and they grow nice and long, which is really easy. And then we also have Green Provider Bush Beans in our raised beds. And we also like the Dandy Gold, although they're not a favorite. So here we have our spaghetti squash, some of it. And this spaghetti squash is actually from our own seed, which we saved last year. And we saw a marked improvement in their hardiness in the spring with just the, you know, the cooler temperatures, as well as the uh, foliage it has been a lot healthier and their fruit is, fruiting is very productive as well. And these, we specifically grew this variety because we want to save the seeds for uh, propagating sunflowers for our animals, hopefully, as well as for doing microgreens for ourselves in the wintertime. Here we have our Alderman Telegraph Peas. And these are for potting. They're still a little young, but they're very good. But we think we're going to end up switching this variety out for another variety called Green Arrow, which we'll show you over there. And it seems to be producing a lot better for us. Golden Bantam Corn. And we also paired them with some beans. We tried some kidney beans and some navy beans and also some zucchini we did over there just as a pair with our corn. We don't generally get corn up in this area unless you have a more of a microclimate. So we definitely had a microclimate this year with all of our heat and needing to water lots. So next up we have the cucumbers. Our pickling cucumbers and this variety is double yield. What we've done is we've made sure to put the cucumbers in between some tall plants such as the corn and the peas and that gives them a much better windbreak as cucumbers do not produce very well if they have excessive wind and we get lots of wind up on the hill here. So they've been very happy this year compared to previous years which has been really nice. So these are the Green Arrow Potting Pea. And these are more of an old fashioned uh, homesteader's pea from what I've understood. And they're just so much fuller. And the peas, they stay sweeter longer, which is just wonderful. And these peas are consistently giving between eight and 10 uh, peas per pot versus the aldermen, which are giving about four to five or one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. Oops. Oh, they're so full. See, the alderman will often have a missing one. Yeah, and they have a big pot. Or a big and then a tiny one, which is pretty annoying. And if you're wondering how we shell all these peas, I bet you guessed it. We sit around our dining table and we pod for hours on end. No, I'm just joking. We have a pea potter that a friend borrowed to us and we will likely make a separate video for you guys so you can see how that works. Those are pigtails. So here are our black currant berry bushes. And this year they gave a very good yield. Amber was able to make some wonderful black currant jam. Mm, it's so good. And it brought, brought back some wonderful memories for dad of when he was younger and he'd go over to his Oma's and she would put black currant jelly on his sandwiches and the flavor is just so strong that it brought those memories back very 
potently. So this row is Brussels sprouts. They are Green Island Improved. That is their variety. And it's actually our first year ever growing Brussels sprouts. So it's kind of exciting to watch how long they take. <laughs> but they're finally starting to sprout as you can see. And in these two rows, we have bush beans that are called Green Provider. And these are from our own seeds that we saved from last year. Oregano, parsley, mammoth basil, borage, nasturtiums, St. John's wort, and hyssop. These are garden huckleberries. First year growing them, so if anybody has ever grown these and have any information for us, we'd love to hear in the comments down below. After we planted these, we heard on somebody's YouTube that they thought they were totally disgusting. So let us know what your thoughts are if you've grown them. Here's a nice bunch of them. And here are our sugar pie pumpkins. Next up we have our tango celery and this is uh, a variety that we are so far really enjoying and we're hoping to plant more of it next year. Maybe you want to flip. Oh, this one popped. And here we have summer celery which is more of a leafy celery but it does have a uh, you know, small stalks that are nice for soups and spices, bone broths. And here's our pumpkin patch, or one of them. A friend of mine in Oregon was telling me, and they're the Pepitas seed pumpkins, the green pumpkin seeds that you usually see in the store. And these are the pumpkins that you would get seeds from. So hopefully we'll have lots of pumpkin seeds and lots of zinc this winter. And these are zucchini, which we love zucchini. And a really great way to have them, if you look up recipes on stuffed zucchini, we really enjoy that. We like to stuff them with ground meat, tomatoes, chives, rice, uh, peppers. Yeah, stuff like that. Stuff <laughs> like that. So here we have our uh, Scarlet Nantes seed carrots that we overwintered last year and we replanted them in the spring and they're just giving out some beautiful seed heads. And this is also really good for bringing in parasitic wasps and insects to help control the pest area of, you know, gardening. And we did the same thing to our beets. This was from a winter keeper beet. And this is our brassica patch. We have Copenhagen for our white cabbages and then mammoth red rock for our red cabbages. Then we also are growing cauliflower for the first time this year. And we are trying the variety early snowball. Then we also have broccoli. And this year we tried the variety green sprouting broccoli. And this is some adorable Congo kohlrabi. And then this is purple Vienna kohlrabi.
And these are our sunchokes or our Jerusalem artichokes. We planted about eight last year, eight little tubers about this big. And they grew last year. We left them in the garden and we harvested them actually this spring and transplanted them into this area. So we've got a beautiful perennial windbreak here and we haven't had them flower yet. This is the front of our greenhouse and we have tomatoes and calendula. We have some sunflowers, a few attempted cantaloupe and watermelon. Yeah. And something really cool, something poisonous. A castor bean plant. We've never done it before and we just thought it'd be kind of fun. And I guess when these are mature and you know they've ripened and everything, you have to put them into a mesh box or a covered area because they explode when the seeds dry and pop out. And they're like bullets. Welcome to our greenhouse. We have some Roma Paste tomatoes. Although they are growing so big, we are beginning to question whether or not they're actually determinate or not. <laughs> Just a really big determinate plant. Amish paste that are reaching the top. Reaching the roof. Yeah, some California Wonder pepper. 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 And here is one of the little prizes. Mm -hmm. Right here. A little watermelon. This is a sugar baby or crimson sweet. I can't remember. These are long English cucumbers. They're growing. And this is some eggplant. Our biggest eggplant we've ever grown so far. Hopefully it'll keep growing. We would love to hear how your garden is doing and where your location is because it's always very interesting to know how things are faring for other farmers and gardeners around the world. So leave your comments below and it'd be great to hear from you. Till, Till next time. time. Bye. When you have something like this, then it makes sense to go pee. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. it really doesn't. All these peas were done in about 20 minutes. And this is Lene. Okay, is that seriously how we're going to open it? I don't think we should open it. Okay, <laughs> okay. So Lene and I will take you for a tour. Little varieties. So, these you can see. Right. I don't know. And they, we trellis them up. It's, they're, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Green beans that are bush. <laughs> Green provider bush beans. Right. Not bush provider green beans. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
<laughs> Dad's raiding the pea patch over there. Mammoth red rock. Mammoth red rock. Mammoth red rock for red cabbage. <laughs> I didn't know we got one. Oh, neat. Cool. It's got some butterfly eggs on it though. <laughs> Boy, when you start going through this with the camera, I'm starting to see how much production we actually have happening. M more than I thought. <laughs> Children, do not do that to your cat. These are special cats. <laughs> it purrs while you pick it up by its tail. <laughs> it purrs because you picked it up by its tail. <laughs> Hear how your gardens are growing. Charles, can you go get that cat and throw it in the dugout? It just went into the brassicas. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. Avoid the monster. This monster. This is a cannabis plant that we plan to use for making sacks. This is red veined sorrel. It's very interesting in flavor. It's almost acidic. <laughs> it is. Isn't that Quite good? acidic. Oh, good night, Mom. Behind me, you can see my monster friend. How tall is that? That's like oh, that's nine tall. feet tall, as tall as Goliath. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit of lemon balm that we planted. It's so nice. This is an Anaheim pepper. That's a what? hot salsa, salsa pepper. Boo. Boo. I know what you want. What? Cookie dough. Oh, yes. And I'll bring some down. That might be good. Might be. You're the cookie monster. Cookie I'm dough not monster. Can you, oh, what was the kind you made last time? It ginger. was really good. Yeah, this is good ginger, please. Yeah, we should do that. Mm -hmm.